This is a chemical burn. Ah! 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 It'll hurt more than you've ever been burned, and you will have a scar. What are you doing? Stay with the pain. Don't shut this out. No, no, no. Ah! Ah! Without pain, without sacrifice, we would have nothing. Listen! You can run water over your hand to make it worse, or look at me! Or you can use vinegar to neutralize the burn. It's only after we've lost everything that we're free to do anything. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the new channel for What The Fuck Jim Talk. As many of you know, recently the original YouTube channel for What The Fuck Jim Talk was terminated wrongfully for spam. I had decided in March I was going all in on YouTube and doing a post per day. So I took a recent long-form podcast I had with Sydney Cummings, a handful of other videos we had created a few months ago, and I put them all into the YouTube upload queue, scheduled those to drip throughout the month, tag people in them, did all the things that YouTube's designed to do, and unfortunately the robots inside of YouTube saw this as an effort to spam the platform. Lick my frozen metal ass! So without warning, my entire account was wiped out overnight. I was sent a very nice email, though, informing me this had happened. They gave me an opportunity to appeal, in which I did. I explained the situation and was very hopeful that a human on the other side of the equation would be able to see this situation for what it was, restore the channel, and give me back the 600, 700 plus videos I have uploaded here in the past six years. However, about 24 hours after my appeal, I received the final word from YouTube that that would not be happening, that the channel was forever a bye bye and that was essentially it. Knock, there. knock. Who's there? Bye bye So left with a few choices. I can bitch and complain about it, go on some Twitter rant about how crappy YouTube's algorithm is, and blame everyone and everything for this injustice that happened to me and all the years of hard work I've put into this channel. Or I could just shut the hell up and do something about it. Now, let me get into real quick why losing this YouTube channel hurts so bad. Many of you know that I do business coaching with micro gyms, and that's my main source of revenue. Making videos on YouTube isn't a direct monetization play for me. It is, however, an indirect monetization play, and we all know that Google owns YouTube. So when somebody goes into Google and types in how to increase operational capacity for my gym, I'm the guy that pops up, and that's mainly because of all the videos and content I've put out on YouTube. And while my content does live other places, IGTV, Facebook, my website, and so on, this was a huge blow for the searchability and topic-based inquiries that my content has created. But while this sucked, like really sucked, there's a huge amount of silver lining here that I think we need to address and you need to apply to any time shit happens in your business or your life. When these kind of unexpected what-the-fuck moments occur, it gives you an opportunity to step back, zoom out, and really analyze the situation. Okay, what really happened here? What fatal consequence has actually occurred? Am I completely ruined, or is this merely just a setback? Oh, you're having a bad day? But did you die? And in the case of so many small businesses and micro gyms through the pandemic and other instances where you've been, for lack of a better word, fucked by the man or a policy or an algorithm, whatever it may be, you got to realize that you didn't actually lose anything. Instead, look at it as gaining an opportunity to increase your resilience, your tenacity, your ability to get through hard times. Because that's why we signed up to do this, right? To be an entrepreneur, to own your own business. You didn't sign up because you wanted it easy. Hell, if that was the case, if you wanted it easy, you would have never opened up a business in the first place. We accepted that when we decided to build a thing, a company, a channel, content, whatever it may be, we then had to commit to the pursuit of doing our best cooking when the kitchen's on fucking fire. <laughs> and in all honesty, if shit happening to you and things that are unfair are going to completely unsettle you and put you in this mindset of, oh, screw it, I'm just going to quit – then honestly, you might not be cut out for this. For all my micro gym owners out there, imagine it like this. Imagine going to a gym where the weights didn't get heavier, where the reps didn't go up, where you were never continuously challenged. What would be the point of going to the gym? You went there with the intention of working hard. And in the case of what happened to me with my YouTube channel or so many of the setbacks and what the fuck moments that have occurred to you in your life and your business, this simply provided you an opportunity to get stronger that you weren't expecting. And when you think about it that way and you change your mindset, you become grateful for the little challenges and big challenges life throws your way. 
So what am I going to do now? Well, I rebuilt the channel. You amazing people are subscribing and showing support and sharing the story on social media, and I greatly appreciate that. And in all reality, I would have to upload three to four videos every single day for the next almost rest of the year to even get all the videos I had on my original channel back on here. So it's going to be a while, but I'm committed to rebuilding this channel. I'm going to be moving forward with all the new content that I've got shot already that's sitting there waiting for upload, all the new Shoot the Shit podcast episodes that are coming, all that is coming back to this channel, and then I'll be slowly dripping in all the vlogs, all the keynotes, all the talking to myself, all those other segments that you've come to know and love from my YouTube channel. But I'll be honest, the true silver lining this entire thing, or in any time as a business owner, when you get kicked in the dick, is that single instance of one of your customers, one of your fans, one of your followers, to let you know how much your hard work means to them, it'll light a fire under your ass to rebuild whatever it is that broke or you lost or was taken from you tenfold. And within minutes of me announcing on Instagram that the channel had been taken down, somebody called in to Urban Movement, my micro gym in Charlotte, North Carolina, spoke to my general manager, and this individual is a big fan of the channel and was trying to show his mom one of the videos, couldn't find the channel and was worried like something had happened to me and actually called the gym. And so my GM, Isaac, calls me and tells me this story and it was absolutely just it was the perfect timing for it because, you know, I just been kicked in the dick. I was a little bit down, but I was trying to fight back. And, and that just that spark that this guy ignited was absolutely incredible. Here's a quick clip of my conversation with him. Hello. David. Yes. What the fuck is up? Dude, get the hell out of here. What I uh, I heard from Isaac that you called the shop and uh, yeah. Get I w- the fuck out of here. I'm like, you want me to faint right now, dude? Are you serious? Appreciate the uh, the concern and all that. It's a, it's a shitty scenario with the whole YouTube thing, but. Um, oh my God, dude. Yeah. But listen, it's all good, right? Shit happens. There's nothing you can do about it. So it's, you can't bitch and whine about it. You just got to kind of shut the fuck. No, you just got to put your head no. down and just start built, rebuilding. Dude, I started following. I, I just, oh my God, dude. I, Oh my God, dude. Thank you so much for calling me. Bro, I, you know, I had this gut feeling. I was telling my mom. And when you were calling me, I was literally talking to my mom when you called me. Like, I feel like I'm talking to, like, Brad Pitt right now. Seriously. <laughs> right now, bro. You are amazing. You know, I was wanting to take the time out. I really, the fact that you, you called, you know, Urban uh, and checked in on it, I, it means, that means the world to me, man. It's, uh, and if there's anything I could ever do for you, please don't hesitate to, to hit me up. This is my personal cell. Shoot me a text anytime. Get out of here. I, I... And now as flattering as that entire conversation is, and it just, I mean, that builds up your ego and it gets you motivated to get back to it. That was parlayed by an entire day of amazing people sharing stories and tagging me in things and sending me DMs and text messages that I, I can't tell you how much all that meant to me and really kicked off and ignited that fire to just get back to fucking work and rebuild what you lost. And it's the power of that that really shows you how even your small contribution to the world has a ripple effect that just shakes some people in such a way that you can't even fathom how impactful your contribution to their life is. So before I leave you, I want to give you two quick pieces of advice as to how you can handle these moments when life kicks you in the dick unexpectedly. Number one, I want you to zoom out of the situation And I want you to retell the entire story out loud as if you were a third person, as if you were not you. You were not emotionally attached to the consequence of what just happened. By hearing it from the perspective of a third party, you're able to fully zoom out, see all the angles, and understand maybe the lack of gravity of the situation. Because when we're super close to these scenarios where something we care about, we've built, we've created, gets taken from us or ruined or shut down, we're far too close to it to act rationally in the moment. And this allows you to put yourself in a mindset of, what would I tell somebody who had this exact same thing happen to them? What advice would I give them? Typically, that advice that you would give, even though you're in the exact same situation, is way more sage and practical and thought out, more rational, less emotional than how you're currently responding to the situation. And doing this little zoom out trick can be monumental in getting your head in the right place. Second, realize you get a do-over. You get an opportunity to do this over again. How many small businesses got shut down during the pandemic only to create a version 2.0 of their business that's actually leaner, more profitable, better than their previous version? Getting forced to have to rebuild something 
is actually a really cool opportunity when you think about it because now you get to do it through a more experienced lens. You know the landscape, you're better at your craft, and you can create a much higher quality product or service than what you did the very first time. Now, while I still own every video I've ever made, they're all backed up on external hard drives all over the place, I still have to take the time to do the uploads and redo the thumbnails and the descriptions, but now I know exactly, I can do them better. I can make the titles more attractive from a marketing perspective. I can give the descriptions more effort. I can add chapter markers in. I can categorize the playlist more specifically based on topics. I'm able to do this whole YouTube thing 10 times better than when I started it in 2015. So in closing, realize that if you set out to create anything, a business, content, art, I don't care what it is, there's going to be a moment in life where you get fucked. Life doesn't play fair and life doesn't give a shit about your feelings. There's that cliche saying, life is 20% what happens to you and 80% how you respond to it and I believe that fully. So if this video has been anything to you, hopefully it's been inspiration that the next time you get kicked in the dick to look at it completely different and say, you know what, I had an itch there anyway. So guys, from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much. I'm excited for the opportunity to continue to deliver you entertaining and educational content regarding your micro gym and how to run a successful business in the fitness industry. And until I see you in the next video, have a great fucking day.